This podcast is sponsored by Release Winery. Every wine tells a story. Each growing season, it's our goal to create an artisan Napa Valley wine of exceptional quality. Join us as the story of this ultra-limited wine continues. Learn more at releasewinery.com. We actually, uh, we started that winery because I wanted to do something in Sonoma. My mother's from Sonoma originally, and I thought, uh, you know, to cross over from Napa to Sonoma. So that's how Croy kind of got its name. It, it just popped in my head one day, the cross, Croy, French varietals, Burgundies, uh, Chardonnay Pinot Noir. We also do Old Vine Zin. It's, it's on an estate that was planted in 1904, all to uh, Old Vine Zin. And, and we also do a GSM over there as well, about in a rosé. So 10, 10 different offerings under that, that labeling. But that started in 2012. We actually finished uh, the remodel of a winery site that we bought in uh, April of 18. It's a beautiful site. Um, when I bought this property, it was in 2008, and it was the home where our tasting room is right now that was re, you know, converted from, a, from a, a, a home to a tasting room. Uh, the winery was not here yet. We, where we're standing or sitting right now is, was a vineyard. It was old vine, AXR, Cabernet Sauvignon, about 40-year-old vines right here. So. I had the vision, though, if we took that, took these rows out, and we built a, a nice long rectangle of a, of a building that um, we could make, make nice wine here. We have 10,000 square feet here and um, in, this, in this room, and it's kind of an interesting space because we come off of a hill that we're able to use kind of a gravity flow. We've got this mezzanine level, and then our cellar is about, sits about five feet, five and a half feet below. So it's a gravity flow winery, but um, you know this is uh, you know when we designed when I designed this place with the architect, it had kind of this spaciousness in mind. You know we we do stack we stack our barrels up a little higher and and uh, but we do also do some custom crush. So the three brands that are included in in under the Vengi roof line here are. Uh, Trespass, Jax, and Macaulay. Macaulay being my first client back from 2001. I, I do consult currently, I have about 12 different brands and then the two wineries that, uh, that I make. You're so a busy guy. It's, yeah, it's busy, but it's fun. Yeah. You know, this is what I, you know, you do, you know, it's, you gotta come back to do what you love. And I really believe uh, that, it, you know, helping people through the wine business and helping them navigate it, uh, making wines for other people, it's really, it's a joy. I grew up, born and raised in Rutherford, so this is all I've known. You know, grew up in the vineyard and the winery. And uh, since uh, from a very young age, I always knew I wanted to be a winery owner. And a winemaker, but winery owner. Never really did. I did work one, one summer I worked construction. I thought that would be pretty important, you know, down the road. And... Uh, and it's certainly proven, a fact, you know, helpful, you yeah, know. Exactly. So I did do my, between, gosh, that was between high school and college, I did do one, one uh, summer of construction. And I was, uh, you know, laborer from, you know, breaking buildings apart to digging footings and, you know, running wire. It just, everything under the sun. I was, I was, uh, it was a young company in Santa Lina. So that helped quite a bit, you know, to kind of deviate from, from wine. One making started with, uh, you know, my earliest memories are when I was about four years old and we, I was at Saddleback with my dad, that's his wine brand, and we were, you know, working evenings because he was, uh, you know, he was winemaker for Villa Mount Eden back in the day, and around a basket press. We started this whole, this whole brand, Saddleback, Vengi, uh, Croy Estate, everything stemmed from around a basket press. It was really uh, humble beginnings. And uh, my job was to change the bucket out from the little, little drain pan, you know, on a tiny little basket press. And I think we probably made five or six barrels of wine back then. But that's where it all spurred from, in Oakville. Yeah, born and raised in Rutherford, and making wine, you know, with my dad in, in Rutherford from four years old. So my first real, real job, I graduated Davis in 98. Uh, uh, it was a great time, great education there. And then I started, my first consulting uh, job was making Sauvignon Blanc in 1999 mm. for uh, a woman named Randy Riley. And uh, that was called Sugarloaf Crossing. It was over by Stony Hill. 
And um, she had this small old vine, uh, Sauvignon Blanc vineyard, and that was my first responsibility, you know, to really? you know, organize that. Working with Saddleback, I was at Groth as well with my dad, and so those were always the, the uh, kind of summer jobs. And, but um, uh, going to work for Mum under Greg Fowler, and then later Rob McNeil, those were great, great experiences. You reinvent yourself, right? I think that's, that's really where that all becomes, that, that, that begins and ends. And so it's the reinvention of what do you do this year to improve upon last year? What do you do to keep it interesting? Because if you don't, I, I think this would apply to any, any uh, you know, career that y you, you do get to play. That, you know, we do have a lot of environmental in, you know, impacts here. It, what kind of season this is going to be? This one's been a wet season in, in uh, 2019. But what, what is it that, uh, you know, that nature gives you? How do you improve on it from the year before? What did you learn? And I think if you, if you don't pay attention to those things, you won't evolve. And this is, a, you know, winemaking is an evolution. It's always learning. It's one of those, those great occupations where you can build upon every year from the last. And, you know, we think outside of the box here with what, what we can do, what can we do differently, what experiments on, on what lots should we be paying attention to. You know, it's, it's from yeast trials, cooperage trials, native yeast, malolactics, temperatures. Uh, these are all, um, you know, variables in, in the lifespan of a, making a, a bottle of wine. It all begins with a framework. Yeah. It all starts with this, you know, before you even, even get pruning, before you even, you know, start the first steps of winemaking, which is just walking the vineyard, looking, looking at it this time of year, or earlier even, you know, uh, to how's this going to all fit in that, that framework of a bottle of wine. What am I going to be saying to people when I'm opening this at some event or show or wine dinner or in the tasting room? What, are, what am I going to be telling people and how, was this, how did this all come to be? Whether it's Syrah, Cabernet, Merlot, white wine, doesn't matter.